All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, I have a lot of new subscribers on this channel, and a lot of you don't know what I've done on the property. Um, I've built a lot of, I had a lot of projects here, um, but a lot of things, a lot of basic things that you really need on a homestead in case the power goes out, um, you know, the the crap hits the fan scenario, that kind of thing. It's always good to be prepared for these things. So I'm gonna go around my property and show you some of the things that I put on this property. Um, and some are very expensive, and I know a lot of you can't do that, and I am, I'm very grateful, and I thank God that I had the means to do it. Then, not so much now. <laughs> um, but um, that I had the means then to do it, and I did it while I had those means. But let me take you around the property a little bit. Let me show you some of the things I've done here, the projects, and the importance of these projects that I've done. The, important, the things that you really need to start looking at if you got a, a small, um, small or big country property. I personally would advise everyone that's living in the cities especially, but even those in the suburbs, to look for a property out in the country. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant, <laughs> nothing huge. We have 20 acres here on this property. Uh, you don't need 20 acres, you can have just a few. You, at least two or three acres would do it to where you can start your own garden and put a few things on the property to where you could uh, be away from the city and even the suburbs. Um, I shouldn't have to tell you about the things that are happening in the world right now. The, moral, the morals of this country and other countries around the world are going down the tubes. Um, certain uh, groups of people are pushing an agenda that I, I don't like. And I don't want to really get into it and you guys are smart enough to know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, sexual immoralities that I, I just, it's just, you only seen this stuff during the times of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, and you know what happened to them. So, And every country that's gone in that direction um, is pretty much falling apart. And you know what God's Word says about that. Pride comes before the fall. So, um, I want to show you some things on my property to help you to get ready for what I believe is coming in the very near future. Not only about what I just talked about, but the, the politics in this country. There, I haven't seen this divide between right and left. It's just so polar opposite. It's just crazy. That can only bring on one thing uh, in, the, in the near future. That could, you know, civil war basically. You know, it could lead to that. And I know a lot of you are thinking that's crazy, but um, not really, not really. Those, those things can happen. Civil war is, is one thing that I've, I've worried about. We've seen the protests that are happening, um, you know, over the wars that are going on right now. Um, it's, it, things are just getting really bad right now. And not only that, but it's intensity, um, things are, going bad rapidly okay so personally I believe you should really start searching for a country property if you haven't done so and if you have a country property and you're still living in suburbia or wherever really make an effort to move out there um, whatever it could take uh, whatever it needs to take to to move out there in the country I would do it now prices of uh, real estate are, are not getting any cheaper now when I moved out here they were reasonably priced now this is ridiculous if I had to do this again out here by what I just did this property and do the thing I couldn't do it there's no way the only thing the only choice you have is to go smaller which is nothing wrong with that it's more important that you're out in the country and away from the cities and the suburbs than it is to have a big property and have everything on there the important thing is you get a uh, two or three acres or more uh, to where you can have the things that I'm going to show you that's on my property. So let's get started. 
All right, guys, so obviously the most important thing you're going to want on your country property is water, okay? We have a well on this property. That's going to be basically your first thing you're going to have to get is well water. After that, you should really work on getting a rainwater catchment system. Anything, whatever size tanks. These are, uh, I have four 3,000 gallon tanks. That's 12,000 gallons of water. And presently, right now, they are full. We had three decent rains uh, right after that drought that we had in the summer. We had some, th we had about three, three decent rains and it filled those tanks right up. It takes the rain off of this uh, garage here that we have. This is a 40 by 60 garage. For every inch of rain that falls on that is approximately 1,500 gallons of water that gets collected in these tanks. Very important, this during the drought, uh, last summer we had uh, triple digit temperatures, no rain for two or three months. And this helped us to water our garden. Uh, by the time the drought was over, we had our last tank, we had about that much water in it. We were that close. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting two more, but like with everything, the more you wait, the more expensive it gets. So I have to also look into that. So very important to get water set up on your property. Uh, if you're interested in this rainwater catchment system, uh, at least watch the videos. You'll get ideas to how you can modify and, and put it into your rainwater catchment system. I'm going to put a link to that right up here. So very important you have water. Now let's go to the next most important thing. So guys, obviously the next most important thing is food. We have to be able to grow our own food. I, I built this greenhouse. Uh, it's been a couple few years now also. Um, we grow all of our lettuces, cabbage, broccoli, spinach, and uh, sometimes, you know, different types of uh, uh, cold hardy uh, plants here in the winter time. Unfortunately, in the summer, it's just too hot here in the greenhouse to grow much of anything. Um, but for the fall and winter months and early spring, which is a long growing season, we can grow all of our herbs. We got uh, cilantro, we got basil over here um, i have all different types of lettuces spinach we got different varieties of cabbage and uh, broccoli cauliflower and very important to grow your own food if you're moving out into uh, or having a, a homestead and moving out of the cities or the, su the suburbs i got this from grower solutions i'm going to put a link to me building this right up here um, and in those videos, there is, uh, in the description, a uh, discount code. Uh, I don't make any, I'm not affiliated with them as far as making money, but um, you will get a discount code. I have a discount code in the description under those videos where you can get, I'm pretty sure it's 10% off on most anything, uh, especially the, the, the greenhouses um, on Grow Solution. All right, guys, so um, growing your own food, having a garden. That was one of the first things here that we did we, when we moved out here is I built a garden. Um, I put all in-ground beds using uh, cement uh, blocks and amending the soil. And we grow a lot of stuff out there. Um, our growing season here is basically spring and fall. And um, the winter times can be a little rough sometimes here. Uh, we, we get these cool fronts that come down and, you know, we'll go from 70s, 60s, and 50s during the day down to, you know, single-digit temperatures uh, at night, uh, once in a blue moon, though. Um, just enough to kill everything off, kill, kill everything off and irritate you. Uh, anyways, um, but we don't grow too much out in the main garden during the wintertime other than... Um, uh, garlic and we start our onions I think in January here uh, you, We can't be dependent always on the grocery stores if something were to happen something crazy something we'd never think about like maybe uh, Oh, I don't know a pandemic or something Something silly like that Where it got so bad where we couldn't go shopping uh, Everybody was you know locked down in their homes um, and 
honestly, people in the suburbs and the cities don't, especially in the cities, you don't have these huge pantries. You're not stocked up for two or three months. There's nothing wrong with storing up food. It's always good to be prepared for anything. And there's nothing crazy about that. Our ancestors used to do that. Our grandfathers and grandparents used to do that. Uh, I grew up in Michigan and a lot of the old homes had, uh, in their basements, they had cellars, a, a, a root cellar down there. And they would, and there would be shelves all set up down there where you can put all your canned goods. People, that was normal. Because these were people that are coming out of World War II and they knew the importance of being, um, saving up on, on, on food, um, on, on anything really, even nails for crying out loud. When you're taking apart a, a shed or something, you save all the nails and straighten them out. That's what they used to do, okay? I, I even do that today. Whenever I tear something apart, if there's some decent nails, I, I save them because they're always good. There's nothing wrong with them. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about here is getting animals on your homestead. Animals that will give you an abundance of food. Now, a good entry-level animal is obviously the chicken. Chickens will give you a ton of eggs, okay? We have some 30, you know, I, I kind of lost count, but I, it's probably 33 or 34 uh, hens in total that we have and with all the eggs that we get from those now during the summertime a lot of these hens put out an egg about every other day okay each hen so that's a lot of eggs so a lot of those eggs we are freeze drying and I got videos on that and I'll put those up here and a lot of them my my dogs and my cats eat so during the day their mo their morning meal we'll just call it for my dogs and my cats we feed them uh, chicken but not from here of course these are just egg laying chickens for us but we feed them chicken and uh, some vegetables and in the evening we feed them scrambled eggs and some vegetables and I don't think we there is a healthier uh, dogs and cats around <laughs> Chickens would be the best bet easy to care for on your homestead and um, And not as expensive as other animals might be so having a solar system on your property is Something that you really should look into Not an absolute necessity of course, but something that is very good to have um, this system here, I installed what you see here back in 2019, the mounts, the uh, solar panels, and the microinverters. I did that back in 2019. The rest of the system was installed by a solar installer. I wasn't confident enough to do it myself, although I was going to. But you know the saying, you learn from your mistakes. Well, if I did a mistake here, it would be a very expensive one, so I didn't want to take a chance. I'll just have it done, pay a little extra, and have it done. Um, a system like this, I can run everything in my house. It would be life as usual. If the grid goes down, I can run my AC, stovetop, everything in uh, my house and my uh, extra storage building that I have that we use also for food processing. On a system like this, yes, I can run everything on my, in my house, AC, stovetop, dryer, whatever. Um, but when the grid goes down, I just don't go flipping switches on and run everything, okay? That's just being stupid. When the grid goes down, even with a system this size, I make sure only the things that need to run, run. And especially the AC and stuff like that, make sure those run good and run them pretty hard during the day when the sun is shining. Keeps the house nice and cool. That way when sundown comes, uh, when the sun goes down, I can put my thermostat up again and uh, the AC doesn't have to work that hard because the house is already nice and cool and saving on my batteries. I got enough batteries to last me most of the week if we had no sunshine. But again, you just got to be smart about this kind of stuff. And when the grid goes down, you just run the necessities and, the, and that's it. And save up on your batteries. 
Now, having something like this on a homestead, again, like I said, is great. You don't have to go with a system this big. Uh, you can go with like four, just a few solar panels, a couple of batteries, and an inverter, which is not that expensive, okay? And just with that small system like that, um, I don't know, a couple thousand watts, you can run your refrigerators, you can run your lights in your house, um, your computers, your TV, and stuff like that. The only thing you won't be able to run on, uh, on a small system like that is obviously the, the other things that I mentioned was like your AC, dryer, and um, uh, sto your stove, electric stove, if you have something like that. So the next item here that you should have on your homestead is gas. This is a 500 gallon tank and the one behind it is a 1000 gallon tank. Uh, the 500 gallon we picked up a few years ago now. We had a 250, 250 gallon tank uh, when we moved in onto this property. It was leaking and everything so we decided to go get with the 500 but I should have went with the 1000 gallon just from the get go. But the 1000 gallon we got uh, last year I think it was, they're expensive. When I looked into a tank a few years ago, they were, the, the thousand gallon, they were roughly going for about $2,000 around my area. Um, and that's not to fill them, that's just the, the tank itself. Now these tanks, I got a deal on it. I got it for $4,500, okay? Because I've seen them as expensive as six, $7,000, if not more. I don't know why they just jumped up in price, but they did, and we as the consumer are going to suffer because of it. So I had that installed and filled up. The guy gave me a little a discount on the uh, propane per gallon, and, and it, it was a, a decent discount because I bought so much. Because at the time, I filled up both of these tanks. And man, that hurt. <laughs> that hurt the pocketbook, let me tell you. <laughs> That hurt. But uh, gas or propane is something you really need to consider. And what things you're going to, you know, obviously you don't want to heat your house with it because uh, it'd be very expensive. You want to go electric with that. And um, as far as electric, I mean, is a uh, uh, heat pump type air conditioner where you can run it for heat in the winter and air conditioner in the uh, uh, summer. Now, as far as heating your home during a power outage, this wood stove here, this is a Buck Stove 91. This has been fantastic for us. It's worked great. I installed this back in 2017, I think it was. And uh, this stove has worked so good. In fact, it's too much heat for the house. And during those Arctic freezes that come down here once in a while, this has worked fantastic. So living out in the country has been such a blessing for us because of the peace and tranquility. I just hear the wind right now blowing, some birds chirping. Um, it's so peaceful. I don't have to worry about riots and things happening because those happen in the cities. Suburbia's got their problems too. Everybody's packed like sardines. You know, the, the, all the, sub, the houses are all you know if you look at it from Google map they all look like sardines packed in a can okay they're just all cookie cutter basically and um, again there's nothing wrong with that I'm not making fun of people that live in subdivisions I lived in subdivisions okay and there was a time when I liked it you know if you find a good a good area to live what I'm saying is being in the country is just so much more peaceful you don't have to worry about your neighbor mowing lawn at 6.30 in the morning <laughs> or uh, the weed eater going, you know, and you're trying to take a nap or you're trying to sleep in or whatever. You don't hear your neighbors arguing and stuff. This is just so peaceful. And I wouldn't go back to suburbia or, this, well, the city for one thing, I'd, I'd never go back to that. But even if you paid me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back. I just, there's no way. No way, it's just too nice out here. Um, you don't realize something can be so peaceful until you actually see it and 
feel it and breathe it and taste it with nice nutritious food you don't realize how wonderful things are out in the country until you start growing your own food breathing the fresh air and um, that's what I want and that's what I hope you're working towards all right guys things are like I said they're getting crazy around the world things are not getting better they're rapidly moving in quick succession to getting worse okay basically is what I'm trying to say we see it in our politics we see it in our, the morals of this country and other countries and the wars uh, the the attitudes of people it's just it's it's getting really bad and the one way to get away from all that is find a country property with water and start growing your own food as much as you can and enjoy nutritious food and it's great for your body and you will be much healthier because of it all right guys so appreciate you watching please like subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in my next video hey ginger come on Come here, Ginger. Oh, little Ginger. Here's your little Ginger. Close your Don't you want to say hi? Hmm? No? Get some rest.